Hello everybody, welcome to the Lazy General and the Siroths playthrough of Stellaris. It's the Star Trek New Horizons mod we're exploring today. Um, on the first episode, we took our first baby steps out into the galaxy. We're being joined by one of our uh, friends, Thorgrim. He's, Hello. Uh, he's also playing along. So there's three of us out here against the world. And... Yeah, this series is being recorded both by the Siroth and by myself, so make sure you follow both channels, and you can see two perspectives on each episode that gets uh, released. So yes, we're just going to continue, sur for myself, we're going to be continuing surveying the the world, the, the galaxy. Um, really would like to continue uplifting this, this race before they get too big, but... Sometime I just need a little. I need more society research, unfortunately. Long -range scan of I am working on colonizing my first planet, so we're gonna go snag that. There is a Class M um, tropical planet that's right nearby, and we just finished unlocking phase disruptors. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So let's look at our. Chip designer. Oh, we got an anom oh, an anomaly. Research that shit. Okay. Chip designer. Let's try that again. Phase disruptor. Do it. And. Oh dear. Skin of Rainfire Evil. Chamber. Yes, I've ha I just had that one. Yeah. That Planary. all black thingy blob. So I don't have enough power for that. So I could... Get rid of the emergency force fields. favor of a nuclear reactor. Ooh. And Fancy. there we go. So we now have nuclear spaceships. Station complete. And I'm losing energy because we're colonizing a planet right now. Yay. So my two ships are now worth 100 fleet power just for two. And my Corvettes now cost 325 minerals a pop. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh dear, lost science because of that skin of evil. Yep, I the same thing happened to me. Because I didn't give it the shuttle. Oh well. I guess we'll look at our science ship designs. Orbital computer initial. Oh, my science ships are armed. I had no idea. Well, it is Star Trek, so they, they are, pretty much everything's armed. But they don't have like a listed fleet power or anything like that. Let me see if it says something in the uh, in the ship designer. They shouldn't have any kind of weapons. Oh, but they do. <laughs> um. Well, maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Never mind me. Never mind me. I was looking at my Corvettes for some reason. I thought I was looking at science ships. Ah, Just a okay. little lazy derp for you guys. <laughs> it happens. I guess we'll research destroyers next. Excuse me, cat. Right. Are you alright? While this, while I have zero science coming in for my society. I need slaves, so I'm going to go ahead and uplift this civilization so I can enslave them. Oh, yeah. I just punched my cat right in the face by accident. Whoops. I went to go reach out and pet her, and she moved her head in the wrong spot. It happens. Indeed. Sorry, kitty. Poor kitty.
So I'm just trying to save up some minerals, build another Corvette, and I should be able to clean up the pirates. Nice. Ooh. Fusion missiles. Ooh. Fusion. Yeah, that's the next thing I can research. Yep. Well, I not believe. that kind of fusion, but... Oh. Um, Sadly. I should be able to do photonic missiles soon. Just, which is fun. <laughs> oh, time yes. torpedoes! Uh, would be funny if I had transphasic torpedoes, but... That's probably that's late game. Yeah, that's... We still <laughs> need to have 200 years. Yeah. All right, so I'm about half. I'm 34, about a third. I'm a about a third of the way through infiltration of this place. Oh, you're doing the uh, the full hostile takeover thing. Yes. All right. My I need. Colony I, is like, I need. I need slaves. So. Planet population works out pretty much the same. You still need to have five pops on planet before you can upgrade your reassembled ship uh, shelter into a planetary administration and then start being able to build actual buildings instead of crap buildings. Wonder those pirates are still hanging out in Saramore. They only seem to like to go for, like, mining outposts and stuff. I'd make contact with Vulcan. Well, that's not logical. We'll fight for our right to exist, fools. <laughs> <laughs> you fools! All right, we're going to build a mining station out here and hopefully draw the pirate fleet out. Well, I found Earth. Excellent. Stomp them out now. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> They'll make great pets. Yes, they will. It's interesting how the uh, the UI uses the computer voice from the original Star Trek. Yeah, from Next Generation, yeah. Mm -hmm. That is Major... That is... Um, Gene Roddenberry's wife. Oh, yeah? I had no idea. Yeah. And um, she was also a nurse in chapel in the original series. Oh, really? That was Gene yeah. Roddenberry's wife? Well, event yeah. They weren't married at the time, but... Well, they say that love that blooms on the set of Star Trek burns brightly forever. Yes. So romantic. Mm-hmm. All right, so we are. We took. We did take a little bit of hit. Hit a uh, hit a little bit ago on this infiltration. We lost twenty percent of our progress. Yay! Yay! Oh dear! Just lost a scientist and a ship. Yay! Ouch. Sounds like things are going a okay. Mm -mm. <clears throat> Survey completed. Station complete. Nice. Okay, so we finished construction of our bait station. We're going to send our construction ship back. We'll let them get upgrades. And then, and then we wait. 
and see if the pirates come out to say hi. Pirates! Fusion oh. missiles. Excellent. <laughs> pirates! Oh, pirates come out to play! <laughs> Warriors! Come out to play! Yay! Zero percent research risk? Research that shit. Well, I'm I am about to set a world war off on this uh, tiny planet I'm trying to take over in the atomic age. By strange coincidence, I actually have empty glass bottles nearby, so I can be like, Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> United Earth is a possible obstacle to the Orion advance. You have been assigned as a possible ad adversary. Interesting. Well, screw you too, humans. <laughs> you just want my booty. Who doesn't? Indeed. Danger? An alien vessel above Beta Lankal Za activates as the short range scan initiates. The drone emits a nucleonic beam directly at Captain Snurd, which causes him to immediately fall to the floor. Number one initiates red alert, and a medical team rushes to the bridge. At first glance, Snurd appears to be knocked out, but the chief medical officer quickly realizes... Oh, well, one second. Got another anomaly. Research that, too. Um, that the captain is, in fact, sleeping in a deep REM cycle. Snurd is generating neurotransmitters at unprecedented levels and appears to be having vivid dreams. Snurd. Snurd. I didn't name him. Is that like, is that like, like Snarf? I guess. We're going to try to get out of range of the drone. The helmsman maneuvers the ship away from the drone, but even at full impulse, it manages to keep up with your ship and continue firing its nucleonic beam at Snurd. The captain seems all right. Let's wait and see. Fifteen minutes pass as the captain seems to sleep soundly. The crew is uneasy about allowing an alien vessel to so easily paralyze Snurd. Oh, we got another event. Um, we must wait. We don't know anything about this beam. After another long ten minutes, the drone... Can we pause for a moment? Because I got a lot of shit happening all at once. Yes. <laughs> okay. After another long ten minutes, the drone finally turns off its nucleonic beam. Snurd slowly comes to, surrounded by medical staff. The captain looks around as if seeing the bridge for the first time, reciting the names of crew members as if they were distant memories. The crew fill in Snurd on what happened, and the captain is stunned that he was only asleep for 25 minutes. Oh, it was that thing. Yes. He, he lived an entire life. Indeed. Yes. Um, Snurd gains 1,500 experience. Woo! Damn, Captain That's going to level him up to four. <laughs> okay, so we got another one. Sleeping dogs. After launching a shuttle to investigate, Captain Snurd and a small team... <laughs> Snurd's having a busy day. From the GHS <laughs> Ziberator have determined that the crew of the damaged vessel have fallen victim to a neurotoxin harmless to the members of the away team while leaving the aliens unconscious but alive. Captain Snurd has successfully hacked into the essential computer and determined the toxin was picked up by the aliens after raiding a nearby star system. While looking to repair the ship's engines in order to lift the vessel from the Lanka from Beta Lankal V's gravity well, Captain Snurd was attacked by one of the alien vessel's crew, a female, apparently unaffected by the neurotoxin. The fight ensues, and Captain Snurd is injured. The alien contacts the GHS Ziberator with a list of demands, including repairs to the ship and substantial material compensation. She threatens to kill Captain Snurd if her demands aren't met shortly. Hmm, well, I, I don't, don't kill Snurd? Yeah, we can't kill Snurd. We're just going to pay the influence and minerals and get Snurd back. Snurd's dead. Snurd is not dead. Snurd is eternal. Is he is the eternal Snurd. Okay, we can start having time move forward again. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all good. Sometimes these events just start piling up. Even <laughs> even in vanilla, sometimes they just pile it up. Yeah, well, like, that was happening. The pirates attacked while I was reading the first one. Like, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, so my cunning plan has worked out beautifully, and the pirates are going after the bait station. 
Nice. However, little did they know that the Gorn were ready. God, my ships are slow. Indeed. We need better warp core, warp engines. Oh, I just need some better impulse. All right, so we're almost double their fleet power now, and we have an even number of ships. So this should go quite a bit better. Our phase disruptors are shredding through the enemy defenses. You don't say. Well, they're only light phase disruptors. <laughs> so I gained twenty percent for put it, for stopping the war. Twenty percent what? Twenty percent uh, progress, and then I just lost twenty percent. Oh, <laughs> well. So overall, I'm negative twenty percent. I guess uplifting an alien species is much more difficult now. Yeah. No, oh, I finally found a primitive alien species. No, oh, I found like five of them. Let me look at my expansion planner really quick. There's nothing else habitable that we found. Research complete. How are things going on Gornar? Oh, I probably should check that. Oh my, the industrial fabricator is quite a building, isn't it? Thirty percent research risk. Sure, we'll check it. We'll check that out. Do it. Do it now! There may be only victory. You're not Klingons. There's a difference. Mm. Gorn, you just gotta grunt a lot. Well, that's what the grunts mean. They're There's actually super articulate. In fact, poetic in their own way. Do you want to read us some Gorn poetry? That piece translates out to sunshine falling on the lotus petals along the ocean on a beautiful midday in the summer. Oh, I, th I thought it was the golf gone interpretation of Shakespeare. No, only the Klingons are like big on the original Shakespeare. <laughs> mm. oh, in the original on. Klingon. Yes, Shakespeare is best read in the original Klingon. It's true. Yeah. Okay, hello, Pirate Station. Ooh. Hello, other racist ship. It's so nice to meet you. And we Gorm spell the word meat M E A T. I just hope the music doesn't get us, does not fly for copyright. Hopefully it won't. Um, it m just might because I'm hearing very much Star Trek. Well, I've got it turned down quite a bit myself. Yeah, let me tune down my music myself. Um. So, oh well, if it gets flagged, it gets flagged. But still, just, just, we just won't have to monetize, we just won't monetize it and it'd be good to go, right? Well, if yeah. it's flagged, somebody else can monetize it without our permission, which is annoying. Yes. But that's YouTube for you, right? Oh dear. I just oh met dear. the Klingon Empire. Oh! I bet they like you. I they bet, don't like yeah. anybody. I've, I'm surprised I haven't met the Klingons yet. Station complete. They're just to the right of me. 
Oh. Okay, I'll be fighting, meeting them shortly because you're at the Briar Patch, right? Mm hmm. Is your home world um, Beta R Rigel? Uh, no, shouldn't be. Okay. Alright, so almost done with uplifting here. Finally. Ooh, what is this resource? Trillium D. Ooh, polarizing hole plating. Thank you. Nice. I must give more armor for my ships. Yay! Armor. Armor's always good. Yeah. And my ships cannot do anything against that pirate station. I... I have a feeling planetary governments... Um, planetary governors, rather, may be much more important in this mod. I'm thinking that too. So I've completed upliftation of that planet. Of that planet, yes. So I can now start enslaving them. Yay! Hooray. If I so wanted to. Do you have a, uh, are they, uh, oh, what's the word? I didn't even check to see what slaves to function. They're like, yeah. Um, decadent. Yes, I, I, I take 10% loss right now for not having slaves. Well, we can't have any of that. No, we can't. So get slaving. Mm-hmm. Well, you'll be happy to know, Thorgrim, I am sending my finest captain. The inimitable Captain Snurd is on his way. <laughs> your area of space. Sweet. He is truly a legend among the angry lizard people. And, and so I, I have slaves I now, but I still am seeing the decadent trait. It might I'm you have to have it. slaves on the planet. So each oh. planet needs slaves um in order to keep the decadent thing from cropping up. So if you have planet A with no slaves, planet B with slaves, planet A will still get the decadent penalty. Station complete. Anomaly found. All right, I have slaves, and it's still... What? My happiness just tanked. Why is my happiness crap now? What are your people's um, ethics? Um... <clears throat> Fanatic collectivist. Okay. Material. Okay. Fanatic materialist. So they're fanatic collectivist, fanatic materialists? Fanatic collectivists, fanatic materialists, and yeah, material. Hmm. Oh. I was going to say if they're oh. xenophobes, I don't know. I don't know why the happiness was tank. Uh, you just have to look at a population with low happiness and see what's causing it. We've got another yeah. event. Eight years ago, Chief Science Officer Snurd, because of course Snurd, was stationed on Mempa uh, 1 at this outpost. Snurd barely managed to beam off the research station with the last personnel on the ground before a large disruption cut off the trans... Oh, hold on a second. Excellent. Okay. 
Before a large disruption cut off the transporter connection. The disruption field has finally abated for a few days and will allow the crew to retrieve the, the important scientific data. As the away team searches for a computer terminal, they notice signs that someone has been living here. Snurd detects life signs on their tricorder and moves to investigate the signal. Suddenly a voice cries out. Snurd dashes into the room, phaser at the ready, and comes upon a life form that looks exactly the same as him. After a few moments of shock for the both of them, the life form quickly explains that it was trapped in the research station as it was the last one to beam out. Just as it was being transported, the signal lock was lost and it has been stuck here ever since. Oh, now I know what it is. All right, we're going to beam them up to sickbay and validate these claims. Um, oh gosh. Okay, the life form genes are confirmed to be an exact match to Snurd. In addition, the brain patterns are almost exactly the same, meaning they both have nearly identical memories. These facts rule out the possibility of a shapeshifter or a clone, as there is no known um, way to attain the same memories and exact genetic structure as a fully grown being. The leading theory is that when the transporter was interrupted by the disruption field, the pattern beam must have reflected a perfect copy of Snurd back to the research station on GHS Zbureter. The life form, now called Snurd 2, had to retrofit the research station to survive for eight years while alone. Due to this, the station databanks are not easily accessible and require extensive repairs. Ask Snurd 2 to help fix the station. Snared 2 has a plan to fix the damage, but involves delving into a structurally unstable section of the research base to link a power conduit back to the computer mainframe. Snared 2 is sure that it is safe, and as he has been down there many times, but an engineer aboard the ship has completed scans that show the structure is dangerous and could collapse the minute. Okay, hold on a second. I got more shit happening. Oh, God. <laughs> um, okay, so the structure is dangerous and could collapse any minute. Um, do it. Snared 2, go. Okay. Um, I guess we're waiting now. Um, meanwhile, Captain Snared opens a channel. <laughs> it's always Snared. He's the ep <laughs> he's like he's like my Kirk. Yep. Sounds Cap like it. Captain Bleb B Snared, apparently. I don't know. Opens a channel to the source of the transmission on the surface and is greeted by an automated holographic communication system. It makes several inquiries about the GHS Ziberator's intention to purchase, but otherwise reveals little before closing the channel. Oh, it's the one where they found the uh, black market dealer. Yes. All right, so in orbit, the Ziberator is under attack from an unseen orbital weapons platform while communications around the planet appeared to be jammed. Um... Open a channel. Let's negotiate. Okay, so I'm clear for now, apparently. And I'm hearing the Voyager soundtrack. Yeah, we're probably gonna get busted on this sh I'm gonna turn off the music. I guess. Um, settings. Yep. Sound. Music. Off. Okay. <laughs> So we do apologize that the music is gone. It is going to add a little bit of quietness to it, but unfortunately, YouTube gets very strict about certain soundtracks being applied to where it shouldn't be. Yeah, we're not making these videos so like they can be grabbed. We don't want any strikes. Um, in fact, these first two videos may end up coming down at some point. We'll see. But Well, as long as we don't monetize them, they'll be fine. Yeah. And I'll probably set, set set these first two to not monetize. Anyways, this does bring us to 28 minutes. It's 29 minutes, actually. Excellent. So would you like to... I believe this is your ending? That's, it is my ending. So thank you all so much for watching. If you like what you've seen, please like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to follow both the Siroth and I over at Twitch. You can find me at twitch.tv slash thelazygeneral and Siroth at twitch.tv slash thesiroth. And I guess you could follow Thorgrim if you want, but I don't think he streams. Do you stream, Thorgrim? Uh, not at the moment. So, I mean, you can throw him a follow if you want. It's up to you. He, he, does, he, ha he has streamed in the past, and he is a very good broadcaster when he does stream. Indeed. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.